not seeing results. Here you are invested in the Tracy Anderson method. You're watching YouTube videos. You're watching people's stories on Instagram. And you're wondering, why am I not seeing the results they're seeing? Do they know something I don't? Am I doing it wrong? That is exactly what we're going to be covering in today's video. Hi, I'm Rachel. This is Rundown with Rachel. Each week I create content around the Tracy Anderson method and other things I'm doing to create a happier, healthier lifestyle because isn't that what we're all here for? Now this topic is an important one because there really, really is no solid manual to the Tracy Anderson method. And many of us just discover what works best by trial and error. And there's gonna be multiple times when any Tracy Anderson method follower is questioning whether they're getting the results they want. And there's all sorts of reasons for that. And when it comes to that kind of questioning, it really is just a part of the journey. I think anything worthwhile comes with some adversity, comes with some resistance, come with some, comes with some skepticism and doubt. And the Tracy Anderson method and journey is no exception. All that to say that I rounded up some pointers should you be finding yourself not seeing the results you would expect or hope for. Of course, if you have some tips of your own, please be sure to share in the comments below. It is so very helpful for everyone. And of course, if you like this video, please be sure to like it. If you like videos like this one, of course, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I mean, you know the drill. So if you are not seeing results, you must know this. It is all in the form. Now, before you're like, Rachel, of course, duh, we know that we should be doing the moves right. What I really mean is how you do the moves, the energy behind the moves, the intention behind the moves. That really makes a huge difference. This is one of those things that's probably best showing you versus explaining it to you. So here's one quick example. Do you notice a difference between this standing ab movement versus this standing ab movement? What's the difference you see? Really, I think you can see how I'm so much more into it with the latter. Let's look at another example. How about this arm movement versus this arm movement. Can you see the difference there? Now what can be tricky about following Tracy is that you can't always see the level of energy in her moves. If you're on an online studio, you're just viewing from the back angle. If you're following the DVDs, there's all sorts of angles. And sometimes you just can't really tell. But in several of her post-class discussions on the online studio, she talks about the importance of accessing the force within you, even referencing Star Wars. She even talks about the importance of kind of putting on a performance. And in a way, I saw this as being kind of cryptic. I really had to read between the lines, but this is really what I think she meant. I mean, and for all I know, maybe I'm entirely wrong. But again, I think the best way to explain these intangibles is by showing it. Now, there's two women I follow on Instagram that I think do an, a phenomenal example of this and really have helped me see the importance of it. Uh, one woman is Kylie and her Instagram handle is finding the angles. And then another Tamara I follow is Erica Boom. And as you can see with the footage I'm gonna put up, you can see how intentional they are about the moves and what energy they bring to it. And you can probably tell too that there's many people that don't bring this level of energy to it. And now that I find myself really looking to tap into that, what a difference it's making in my results. Now I made sure to reach out to Erica and Kylie to make sure they're comfortable with taking part and they were so gracious. I highly recommend you follow them. They post all the time and they're so inspiring to me and how to approach the workout in the best way. I love following them as they exemplify the intention behind a move and executing it with that force that Tracy talks about that force that really involves your whole body. A secondary tip to form um, when looking to master the mechanics of it is really identifying where Tracy's head, shoulders, hips, knees, and toes are. This is something that the coach Courtney had shared. And also in one of Kylie's recent posts, she talks about even identifying where her shoelaces are. And I love that Kylie even pointed out that it's taken her a year to learn about this simple trick 
And it just goes to show this is a journey. We're all learning this together and how helpful it is to follow others that are sharing the tips that are making such a big difference. So when you're looking to master the mechanics of the moves, be mindful of where Tracy's head, shoulders, hips, knees, and toes are. And then of course, with Kylie's tip two, to notice where the shoelaces are, because that will make a big difference in which muscle you're accessing. Another question to ask if you are not seeing the results you wanna see is, are you actually doing the method? Doing both the mat workout and dance cardio. That is really how to follow the method. So something I've learned from Tracy's post-class talks with an online studio is that if you're doing spin classes, going on runs, doing high intensity interval training classes, in addition to the Tracy Anderson method, then you are not following the method. The method is intended to do both the mat, dance cardio, and really that be the basis of your workout. Now, as with anything, do you. If you love other things, other activities, and you like to incorporate it in your life, then by all means do it. And Erica Boom is a great example of that. She's a cyclist and she looks phenomenal. But simply put, that is not required for the method. And in a way, it's not following the method as it was intended. So with that, if you're doing other workouts in addition to the Tracy Anderson method, maybe you experiment for a few weeks and do Tracy Anderson method as it was intended. The dance cardio and the mat workouts, those prescribed times a week. Now I realize for many of us, it takes a long time to incorporate the dance cardio. That's totally fine. You've gotta be patient with yourself, but work it in over time. I'm telling you, Dance cardio really makes the world of a difference. You're selling yourself short if you're not doing some aspect of it. Now, if you have joint issues, I highly recommend you look into getting a rebounder. I have a video on that. Also revolutionary. I was having some knee issues. I started doing the rebounder more. Now my knees are at a point where I can do dance cardio fully on the floor all the time and there's no issue. But again, dance cardio is a must. For me personally, it really helps me reach the look I'm going for. Some weeks I do more dance cardio than others. Some weeks it doesn't happen at all. It really is a journey. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that I was watching one of the Tamley interviews that's on YouTube. I will link it with a Tamar Loretta. And Loretta was talking about how it took her some time to adopt dance cardio, which was interesting because Loretta was a runner, has a great level of endurance, but it just takes time to adopt. So you gotta be patient with yourself. And I love that in this interview, Loretta was pointing that out, that it's just gonna take some while to master and adopt that. Again, this is a journey, truly. In that video, Loretta also has a, a lot of other great tips and it's totally worth checking out. Again, I will be sure to link that in the description. Third tip for if you're not seeing results, recognize and address what is getting in the way. It may be that Tracy Anderson method needs to be on the back burner for a little bit for one reason or another. Maybe work is requiring too much attention or your family is. Perhaps you're bored of the method and you need to pause a little bit. Maybe you just need a break in general. I know that's happened to me multiple times. Perhaps your eating habits are holding you back. Whatever it is, by first recognizing what's getting in the way, you can then determine how to adjust. Maybe it's best that you return to doing the full Tracy Anderson method once work calms down, but instead, do just dance cardio or do just the mat workout for now. You could rearrange your schedule, get up earlier to get your workout in or work out towards the end of the day. It's all about just adapting. If you're getting bored of the method, I know I certainly have, get creative with how to zhuzh it up, make it more fun. Maybe get some new workout clothes, update your playlist, uh, freshen up your workout area. If your eating habits are getting in the way, explore what it is you're actually seeking. What are you hypothetically hungry for? I know that's a topic I'm very passionate about and I constantly work on. I'll link videos related to that too because I know so many of us deal with that. But the underlying theme is to be curious and be honest with yourself. Again, recognize what's getting in the way and then address it, work through it. The fourth tip if you're not seeing results, track your progress and setbacks. Now, whether it's taking progress photos or measurements, track your progress because you may be surprised to see the dramatic difference. It can be pretty simple once a week, once a month to check in with your latest progress photos or measurements and then compare them from the beginning. Sometimes from week to week, you're not gonna see much, but if you compare it to the very beginning, 
you may be that much more encouraged. Personally, I've held back from taking progress photos and measuring because as someone in recovery for an eating disorder, I just know that it's really not that constructive for me. And really the method for me is so much more than just about my physique and I don't wanna get so fixated on that. I know myself to know that it's probably best that I don't do that, but that's just me. Everyone's different. But if you're getting discouraged, you may be surprised that you may be actually progressing so much more than you would ever expect. All this to say, when you see yourself every day in the mirror, you may not notice the changes that are happening, which is why tracking your progress can be so helpful. It's also important to track your setbacks. If you had a week that was good, seek to understand why that happened. If you're feeling fat or bloated, also seek to understand why that happened. Get curious about that. Every single month, I am amazed by how bloated I feel about three weeks before my cycle, you know, that ovulation time. Thank goodness for cycle trackers because, because they help kind of talk me off the ledge. I've also found some great bloating supplements, which I'll link and I'm happy to talk about in a separate video, but that also helps me during those times. I just feel fat and gross and I'm like, wait a second, is this even working? And I suddenly just wanna shift gears and just quit when usually it's more of a hormonal thing going on and it's not so much that the method isn't working. Can anyone relate to that? Yeah, I have to remind myself that every single month. So getting back on topic here, track your progress and setbacks, use those findings to support you and redirect you as needed. And then lastly, if you're not seeing results, you need to be patient. If you're looking for a quick fix, I'm here to tell you this is not it. And this is actually a good thing because much of the time quick fixes are lost as quickly as they are gained. For that reason, you may want to revisit why you choose Tracy Anderson method and why the long-term path is worth it for you. For me, the reason why I love Tracy Anderson outside of the <laughs> outside of the vanity reasons, I'm not in pain from working out anymore. My joints feel better than ever. I'm not ravenous after the workouts and I'm not out eating my workouts, which has been paramount in my recovery from an eating disorder. So I believe in this method and to my core, to my core, I know it's what's best for my body, especially long-term. Also, as an anti-aging enthusiast, this to me is an anti-aging workout, which could very well be a video topic in the near future. Let me know if that interests you. Um, the moral of the story here is you've got to be patient with your results and focus on the reasons you choose the Tracy Anderson method that are more important than how your body looks. In closing, I want to leave you with something to think about. Let's get philosophical for a minute. There's a saying that I refer to often, which is what you resist will persist. In other words, what you are at battle with, what you are resisting, what you're fighting against will continue fighting you back. What you resist will persist. But when you can accept things as they are, you are much more likely to work through those problems because you're not in conflict. It's one of the reasons why I think focusing on the good is so important. When we focus on the areas of our bodies we like, we're being loving to our bodies. We're having a good relationship. We are allies. We're working together. But when we focus on the bad and are resistant to what is, we are in conflict with our bodies and our bodies fight back, giving more of what we don't want. With that, consider, what are you resisting? What are you fighting against? How is it fighting back? How can you move out of that conflict and support yourself instead of being at battle? Some philosophical stuff, right? <laughs> so those are my five top tips for anyone that's convinced that they're not seeing results with the Tracy Anderson method. As with every video, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing if you have. It really is the best way you can support this channel and how much I appreciate it. So with that, I hope you have a great week and I look forward to seeing you next time.